Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Friday, August 4th. Over the next few days, we will see decreasing showers and thunderstorms. However, for the next two days, we'll have scattered showers and thunderstorms over the northern third of the GAC, tapering off in the southern areas. And then by Sunday, we will start to lose some of that lightning and shower coverage and mainly just be confined to parts of central and eastern Idaho into Wyoming. These thunderstorms today, however, over parts of the Payette may be a mix of wet and dry, but relative humidities are pretty high this morning with extensive cloud cover, so it doesn't look like we'll have too many issues up there with drier lightning, but again, could be a mix of wet and dry with, not, with some areas not getting as much precipitation. There also will likely be gusty outflow winds associated with these thunderstorms as well. Over the last 24 hours, we saw, again, scattered to numerous showers and thunderstorms over the northern and eastern half of the GAC. The only areas that really were outside of this moisture were parts of southern and western Nevada, which stayed on the drier side, and then parts of central Idaho did not get as much precipitation. So near our large fire activity, again, didn't see much lightning or shower activity, uh, but certainly plenty of cloud cover and at least some higher humidity. Great Basin fire activity has generally been light. We saw some new fires with some of the lightning over southern areas and also up north into Idaho. Uh, these thunderstorms have shown some growth in some of these areas on the northern part of the Boise, uh, but again, with the higher humidity in the showers, uh, hopefully these will be good catches as well. Yesterday, there was a reported 13 fires for 11.2 acres and over 5,000 acres of growth on our large fires. Over the last 7 to 14 days, we've seen precipitation mainly target the eastern half of the region. This does not take into account the showers and thunderstorms we saw yesterday, which did make its way into northwest Nevada and also southwest and parts of central Idaho. But certainly above normal for the time of year uh, with this latest monsoon surge. 100-hour fuel moistures have dropped quite a bit or have or still remain low over northern and western areas and have increased quite a bit over the eastern half of the region with the moisture. This is our experimental ERC percentile point map, so we're still looking at this, but right now it looks fairly representative where we have seen much lower ERCs, where we've seen that moisture over much of the region. Some exceptions, again, are western and far northwest sides of Nevada, and also parts of central Idaho near our large fires, which, again, have not received much precipitation at all, but certainly at least have seen some higher humidities. But we will start to see these values of ERC go down, especially across Idaho. Not so much in the Sierra Front and far northwest areas of Nevada as those areas won't see as much, if any, precipitation, especially down towards the Sierra Front will be dry. Currently our ERCs, again, have come down a little bit in parts of central Idaho just with the humidity and the cloud cover. However, uh, we'll be decreasing likely uh, more rapidly once they see some showers and thunderstorms. We did see a little bit more of a decrease in the Salmon Chalice that did have a little bit more moisture. And then areas further south, ERCs obviously dropped significantly with the moisture. Our satellite loop from this morning shows an, a main trough of low pressure well off the west coast with the ridge dominating the southern tier of the U.S. There was a weak area of low pressure moving through the northern Rockies that, did, that has been enhancing our showers and cloud cover up north. Currently, we have definitely plenty of cloud cover across Idaho and just some isolated light showers this morning. So looking at our weather pattern for later today, again, you can see the moisture mainly in the northern third of the geographic area with much drier conditions pushing into southern and western areas. So our significant fire potential will generally remain low to moderate across the region. Um, again, we will start to see that significant fire potential come down a little bit more in central Idaho and also over parts of northwest Nevada that have seen some of the moisture, but obviously significantly decreased in areas that have seen more persistent showers and thunderstorms. So as that drier air moves into southern areas, relative humidity will quickly drop to below 10%. Further north with the moisture where we have our large fires in central Idaho, certainly much better conditions with relative humidity. Relative humidity this morning is above 50 or 60%, with some areas in the Payette above 80 or 90%. Those will drop, but should remain above 25 or 30% today. We will see some gusty northerly winds over parts of Idaho, so our large fires are current, certainly certainly could see some gusts in the 20s and then also any gusty outflow winds with thunderstorms. As we move into Saturday, the moisture only moves a little bit further north, so still expecting scattered showers and thunderstorms across mainly Idaho, possibly still into far northeast Nevada and northern Utah. 
But the drier air, again, really just taking hold of those southern areas. So we are starting to see that significant fire potential creep back up, especially in areas that didn't receive any moisture or on the lower sides of the moisture. So south central and western Nevada will definitely respond quicker. Relative humidity Saturday in the single digits to between 10 and 15 percent over the southern half of the region and only dropping to 25 or 30 percent at the lowest in the north with that again another day of cloud cover and showers and thunderstorms. Gusty winds, we may see more of a shift to the northwest as far as wind direction, uh, still maybe the Hayden fire, maybe north northeast. In any case, low to moderate wind speeds, we could see some gusts in the 20s again, and then any thunderstorm certainly could produce some gusty outflow winds. So we move into Sunday, that dry air remains in place in the south, and it, the moisture in the north is starting to taper off, but still some showers and thunderstorms lingering over parts of central Idaho into Wyoming. Significant fire potential continues to increase again over the southern and western areas and remains low in the north. Relative humidity, a very similar picture on Sunday with the single digit to teens over the southern half of the region and also starting to see that decrease in relative humidity in northwest Nevada. Still Idaho staying high with that moisture in place and we may see more westerly to northwest winds. Again, gusts in the 20s, maybe up around 30 miles per hour. We'll also see some gusty winds with these drier conditions down over southern areas. However, with the recent monsoon push, uh, fuels likely won't recover enough to where this could be a high risk. But again, uh, certainly could stir up some holdovers. We've had plenty of lightning in those areas uh, this week. And so uh, certainly the likelihood of holdovers will be increasing as we get later in the weekend. Three-day amount of precipitation, obviously the heaviest precipitation is into central Idaho and into Wyoming. So hopefully this is good news for our large fires. Uh, so far they have not received much precipitation yet, but hopefully in the coming days we'll see some wetting rains for, for those large fires. As we move into next week, we still have dry air in the south and the moisture is starting to lift north. Again, couldn't rule out certainly some cloud cover, maybe some isolated showers and thunderstorms in central Idaho, but certainly coverage will be on the decrease. So still low fire potential up north and increasing fire potential down south. And then as we move into Tuesday, I could see another round of precipitation moving through, but mostly in the form of cloud cover in the far north, still that dry air in place down south. So significant fire potential continues to creep up, especially across Nevada and even over Arizona and Utah. And we will start to see some drying as we go into early next week over southern and southwest Idaho. And by Wednesday, much of that moisture moves off to the east. And by Thursday, again, drier, so we will see increasing fire potential, but it will be fairly gradual in the north and targeted more towards the mid to late portion of next week. But obviously you can see southern and western areas or the southern two-thirds of the geographic area really drying out going into next week. Seven-day total precipitation, not a whole lot different than the three-day with much of that precipitation here falling in the next few days. And then the 8 to 14 day outlook taking us from August 11th through the 17th still shows wetter conditions potentially up north. But right now the long range models just aren't really indicating uh, that much wetness in this extended period. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. We could easily be shifting more um, to a normal or below normal um, precipitation pattern up north depending on how things evolve. Still does look like things will dry out going into next week over southern areas and may remain dry, so not really seeing much of an increase in monsoon moisture after this push. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.